am Rebecca Kling. I'm a transgender artist and educator. I do educational workshops around transgender issues and performance pieces around transgender identity. I wasn't totally sure how I wanted to be involved in the arts world when I was in college and, and for the, a year or two after graduation. And it was something that I knew I wanted to be involved somehow, but I didn't know what that meant. I was the general manager of a, a nonprofit theater in Chicago for three years. And arts administration is great. I really got a lot out of it. I ultimately realized that I wanted to be doing work that spoke to me. In 08, we had the really fantastic opportunity to work with Tim Miller, who's a gay solo performance artist out of LA. That was the first experience I'd had using the tools of theater to talk about my experience as a trans person and was really pivotal in, in seeing how valuable that was to me and how empowering and how cathartic to share my experience and how positively it was received. I have a voice, I have these tools of theater, and I can combine them into something that I think is, is really exciting and empowering and cathartic for me, and also, hopefully, a positive experience for an audience. She tells my mom, and we're told that that is not a good way to play, and that being naked together is not okay. Changing attitudes requires a balance. There are people that I'm gonna sway talking about the theories of gender, talking about problems with the binary system, talking about the lack of reality of trying to really distinctly define gender, that biologically, genetically, it's not that simple. And for some people, that's gonna be enough to say XX and XY, but what about XXY or X broken LX or, or all of these different things like, oh, gender isn't actually as simple as we like to think it is. But no one will care no one will call their representatives or their senators to say, hey, back this, unless there's a story behind it. And so I think the counterbalance to why should trans people have protection? Why should, there, why should we be protected from being fired for being trans? Why should we be allowed to teach and adopt and do anything that anyone else can do? I think the stories are important behind that. And so I'm able to say, I was fired for being trans. And so that's the, the story that hopefully helps change attitudes and helps people back up um, legislative efforts. The other thing that I think is, is important about work like mine is giving trans people and gender nonconforming people the opportunity to, sto to see stories that are like theirs. That it was incredibly isolating and lonely for me growing up not being able to see people like me on TV or on stage or in movies, being able to say, okay, there are people doing cool work who are trans rather than just people who are on Barbara Walters or on 60 Minutes or 2020 because being trans is weird and quirky and we want to talk about it. For as long as I can remember having a concept of gender, I knew that I would rather be a girl than a boy. I remember fantasizing about switching places with my girlfriends about... I think... Art is a pivotal educational tool for stories. And I think that it's not a replacement for classroom education, but it's an important supplement, and in some cases, equally important. And I think of it as two sides of the same coin. Some of that information is going to be better one way, and some of it's going to be better the other way. Some of it is going to be more understandable in a classroom setting. Some of it's going to be more understandable from a narrative setting. Both are important. But I think if you're just doing classroom education, you're leaving out the stories. There are reports on the numbers of trans people. 90% of trans people have suffered job discrimination or harassment. 26% of trans people, myself included, have been fired for being trans. Those numbers really suck, but they're abstract in a way that emotionally saying, here is how it felt to be fired. Here is what it did to me. Here's what it has done to other people in this community, is going to give sort of the one-two punch. When I was at Smith College in November, there was a piece in Storms Beneath Her Skin, which was the show that I was doing there, where I let this litany of woes. I talk about all of the shitty things that can happen as a trans person. And I saw someone in the second row who I had talked with before and after and knew somehow was identifying as genderqueer or trans, starting to cry. It was a connection of it is powerful to hear your story anytime, but especially when you haven't heard it before or when you've heard it told poorly or told as a freak show or told from an outside perspective or from a sexual aspect or whatever it is. And so being able to share my story in that way 
was incredibly heartening. 